All right, welcome to the Resilient Schools podcast. We are here at the Bridging to Resilience conference and interviewing people here. Wonderful conference, mm. really powerful stories. I'm privileged to be sitting with Katie Kinder right now. So you talked about brain-based classroom in your session I did. here. Tell us a little bit about that for those who don't know what that means. Sure. So I've been teaching since 2006 and I'm actually alternatively certified. Oh, me too. Okay. And what subject do you teach? I taught English. Me too. Oh my gosh. What was your major in college? Uh, Journalism. Oh, interesting. Mine was technical writing. Oh, interesting. It was an English degree, yeah. but it was a technical writing emphasis. Well, I did PR for a while. Oh, yeah. So my mom is an education rock star in Tulsa. And so I kind of grew up in her light and her shadow. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I just think you're an educator. And I was like, you don't know me. Like, as a petulant yeah. teenager, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I go to OU, Boomer Sooner. We just lost. Mm-hmm. I'm still a huge fan. And I got my journalism degree and I started doing some PR stuff. And I was like, see, I don't need your education. And my best days were when I was spending one whole day a month in high schools in Oklahoma Uh because I worked for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And one of our national sponsors is the DECA kids. Mm -hmm. And so once a month, I got to go to different ones. And it was my best day. And my heart was just pitter-pat. And... It took me two years to call my mom, mm-hmm. and she grounded me. I was 24, <laughs> and I, <laughs> uh, I was like, I think I'm a teacher. She's like, yeah, I know. She's like, not gracious. <laughs> and so I went back, and I was thrown into a classroom for the first time with zero training. Yeah, zero. me too. Ninth grade classroom. And I wondered why I was having issues. They were eating me alive. Mm -hmm. And so I just became a study of the game, which I feel like we always need to be a study of the game. Mm -hmm. We always need to be you know, searching out best practices and innovative practices and how we can reach kids and how their brains are developed and all of the things. So that's really what I started doing. Mm -hmm. And so now as a, you know, author and teacher and presenter, I have just dealt, I dove into this brain research and how we can engage those adolescent brains, those middle school brains. And that's not always, it's not always easy. No. And it's definitely not how we taught even 10 years ago, like yeah. we need to you know, be keeping up with them. Yeah. Obviously, you're an expert. You've done a lot of this. What are the things that we need to understand as we begin sure. about this so that we're, even if we don't know all the details, because this is, this is my big thing, I need to get to the bottom line. Like, what do I need to understand to so that things. I can do this better? Yeah. So I think colors really matter. And all of these studies have shown that kids should only see colors that they see in nature. Oh. In a classroom. So we're talking soft blues, uh, browns, greens. And so if there's a bright red wall in your room, like it's going to be distracting. Or if you have a ton of clutter mm-hmm. and posters everywhere and Garfield quotes. Yeah. I mean, like, come on. And I was just in my session and I had a, a little baby teacher. That's what I call my new baby teacher. So mm-hmm. I love them. And she said, oh, I have Mickey Mouse theme. <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's okay. Uh, But yeah, like what can you declutter? What can you, you know, can you paint a blue wall? Can you do this? Because colors really matter and it can affect the learning environment. Clutter, low lighting, like all of these things that we can do to help our kids like really focus. As in low lighting, we should have low lighting? We should have low lighting. We should not have those fluorescent lights. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to bring in lamps or you know, natural sunlight is good for the brain. So colors really matter. University of Iowa, they painted their opposing locker room Mm. for football. It was called Drunk Tank Pink. Hmm. Okay. And so the opposing team would go in there and they're getting ready. And well, they started to feel like woozy and like weird and it would affect their play. Wow. And there were so many complaints. The NCAA intervened and said, you have to paint it a neutral color because they were having such issues. Wow. And that's with a fully you know, developed prefrontal cortex, like it was affecting them on the field. So, so interesting. Uh, So then another thing is smells. Mm. So like smell memories are like in our limbic system, right? Yeah. So it's like you could be walking around, you go into a place that smells like your grandma's homemade cookies Mm -hmm. and you start crying because your grandma's gone. And you're like, oh my gosh, like that wave of nostalgia 
And so we want our kids to have good memories of our of our classroom, good smell memories. Mm-hmm. So my, you know, different smells trigger different things. So vanilla is calming. So is lavender, uh, eucalyptus and peppermint kind of fires, snaps us off in the brain and gets them ready to learn. As a middle school person, you know this. They need calm. Yeah. I was going to say, where does Axe body spray fall right. into that category of smells? <laughs> I, did. I just said smells matter. And one of the smells that doesn't help is BO. So we got yeah. <laughs> no middle kidding. school. Like, how many <laughs> conversations did you have? Like, hey, baby, deodorant is your friend. Yeah. Like, we love you. Here's some deodorant. Thank you. Yes. And I say that in the same breath as I tell my own children that I yes, birthed exactly. the same thing. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so my classroom smells like vanilla. And... I had an illegal sensei. I'm like telling them myself. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when the fire marshal comes and you get that like big, you sent the, you sent the email out I as sure the did. principal. Yeah, You're yeah. like, if anything is illegal sensei, is this, it's, yeah. put it up, like put it in your car. You can get caught with it. So That's right. Contraband. All the, t- <laughs> <laughs> all the teachers are putting their illegal senses in the car. And I got to teach a really special group of kids two years in a row. So I got to have them in seventh grade and then I got to loop up with them in eighth. One of my best years, we, I didn't have to do with procedures or learn where everybody was. Like, we just went. My kids grew leaps and bounds. So I just went to their graduation. Awesome. And I I like to sneak in where they're holding them because I don't want to just see them from afar, walk across yeah. the stage. Like I, They're my baby. So I'm a little bit of a rule breaker. And I go in and because they get, they're like, Miss Kinder, you know, when you see a kid out. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you are a person. You know, I you're not, you don't live at the school. Like, oh, I just woke up and now I'm here at school. <laughs> and I had this little girl run up to me and she smelled me. She was like, You smell like my middle school experience. She starts crying. Yeah. And because I had vanilla lotion on and vanilla, like, and so she had these memories of my room that were safe and fun. And yeah. And uh, so smells are another thing. Movement. Yeah. Well, let me talk about smells for a minute. So I lived in Russia for two years, did a mission for my church there. It was amazing. Uh, Really cool experience. But my, when I first got there, uh, like my second day, I rode a train from Novosibirsk out to Ulan Ude, which was like 24 hours, long time. And when I went into the train car, there was another missionary there and uh, his name's Chris. I actually just saw him this weekend. And the way that I greeted him was I said, Chris, you smell like America. Because when he saw me on the train, I was wearing clothes that I had washed in America. And he was like, oh, my goodness, you smell like America. That's awesome. And and so this thing is like so powerful. He had been out there for eight, ten months, something like that, and had this like visceral reaction to whatever laundry detergent I was using. And that was over 20 years ago, Katie. Yeah. yeah. And that like drilled itself into my mind into his mind and That's awesome. and we have that connection that is that is based on a smell which sounds so bizarre nope. but is very real yeah okay go on movement next yeah movement we know that movement matters like our kids should never sit longer than their age in minutes Whew. Hmm. Uh, which means my 14 year olds need to get up three times in yeah. my class uh-huh. and i have to build that in so mm-hmm. i think that's really important like we should not be sitting in rows and the great Kim Campbell, who is also an education speaker, also a huge middle school person, she says, when the booty goes numb, the brain goes dumb. Mm-hmm. And it's like almost like sharing that with your kids, too. Like, no, you have to stand up and do head, no- head, shoulders, knees, and toes right now because your brain has gone numb. Yeah. And so I think that's really important. Yeah, I think making sure that if there is a traumatic experience in school, because sometimes that happens, knowing when to scrap your lesson mm-hmm. and do what's best for the kids in front of you. Mm-hmm. And that's really hard sometimes for my new teachers because they're like, well, I have to get this standard and this standard. And this standard. Well, you're not going to get to those standards mm-hmm. and they're not going to learn if their brains are like full of trauma and fight or flight. And, and so you need to know when to drop into a community circle. You need yeah. to know uh, when to do what is best for kids. Yeah. So, Well, one of the things that I uh, often say is that, Nobody cares about the standards that kids are supposed to learn except for the adults. Right. And so <laughs> kids kids don't care if they get the standard or not. No. Kids don't care if you have all the stuff that you have to, quote unquote, get through yeah. in the lesson. Nobody cares nope. except for you except for as you. the teacher. So once you recognize that, then you can kind of just let that go. Yeah. So 
what you've talked about so far are basically all five of our senses. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the power of noticing our senses and paying attention to them and focusing on them? Well, I think it really opens up the brain, this pliable thing that we all have. Like, you know, we we saw our keynote this morning who was absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even following her yet. And now I'm like a super fan, uh, Stacey Nation. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I have done some light stalking yep. on her because of who she was. Yeah. Uh, but this pliable thing that we all have, like we can get stretched is what she says. She, she says it was like a rubber band. Mm -hmm. And so we have to like de-escalate situations and not just for our students but for ourselves i really loved that because that is so true mm -hmm. uh and like having strategies in your back pocket to be able to pull out and be like okay i'm gonna take a breath of tapping mm -hmm. tapping re re um uh, grabbing your earlobes and resetting your brain like all of that i think you share with kids too like okay we need to take a moment we need to breathe we need to tap and even my middle schoolers, some of them think they're too cool for it, but really they're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Even adults think they're too cool for it. Oh, yeah. When she started doing it, I was like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And we, I was taffing uh, because I know how important that is. Yeah. So uh, yesterday I was at a different conference in Nebraska. Okay. And, and I did a session uh, where I do some of this brain stuff as well. And, um, and one of the things that I do is I have people rub their fingers together with such a tension that you can feel the ridges on either finger. So not too soft, not too light, not too heavy. And so you can just feel each ridge on each finger, which is really powerful. Now- Jethro, I don't think I can feel my ridges. I, I feel like I've been desensitized. Are you one of those people who burned your fingerprints off so that you couldn't be caught for a crime? <laughs> How dare you ask me? I plead the fifth. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I did not. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, no, I can feel him. There you go. You just, it just takes throw. the right tension, right? Yeah. So uh, Shirzad Shamin, uh, who wrote the book Positive Intelligence, talks about how when you focus your senses, then you get into what he calls your sage brain. And the sage brain is the creative, big picture thinking part of your brain that's not in your limbic system, that is not fight or flight, that is rational, that is clear-headed, that is the the very best version of yourself and those of you who can't see i'm just like finding the ridges in all of my fingers yeah i'm sitting here talking and she's like just focused on her <laughs> fingers but what's great is that when you when you do that then you get into that sage brain that he calls it and then you're able to solve problems you're able to think rationally you're able to have empathy curiosity mm. creativity mm. All this kind of stuff that we really want kids mm -hmm. and everybody sure. to have. And it's really powerful because what it what it does is it puts you in that position to be ready for that stuff mm -hmm. that you need, for the the skills you need, the strategies that you need, all of that. And that's exactly what you've been talking about. So on your book list, I would definitely suggest positive intelligence is so I, I use that in my coaching with school principals that when they're having a difficult conversation with someone, they do the fingertips. And, and so as they're talking to someone so that they can have that focus, they still want to listen, but you don't want to be reacting. You don't want to be mm -hmm. uh, acting out of the stress or, or we, we talk about being responsive mm -hmm. to kids and we should be, but at the same time, we need to be proactive and absolutely and set ourselves up for success. And being we're just responding to them is not always the best thing that we need to do. Sure. Sometimes we need to say, "Okay, you're escalated, and I'm not going to respond to your escalation. Mm. I'm going to respond to what you really need, which is some strategies to calm down and be in a better place." A thousand percent. That's good. That's some good stuff right there, Jethro. There we go. Look at us go. I feel like we're thought leaders. <laughs> I think we are. <laughs> All right. So, Katie, how do people uh, get in touch with you, the thought leader, and learn more from you? Well, I've been going all over and speaking and doing workshops and loving on the teachers. And I do some uh, keynotes as well. I've been kicking off school districts. It's really fun. And uh, you can find me on Twitter, also known as X, at Katie Kinder one you can find me on Instagram at Untold Teaching Truths. I'm Googleable, which sounds weird, but I'm Googleable. We all do it. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, reach out kittykinder.com and I would love to keep this conversation going with you and with everyone. So yeah. fun. Very good. Cool. Katiekinder.com. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. All right. Bye everyone.